Oh. Oh my god, we gotta do a video. Welcome back to the show, it's Gay for May, and I know we rarely review Transformers on this channel, but Studio Series 86 is a line that I love talking about. Every figure is a delightful and charming little guy, if not the very best figure that character has ever gotten. So it's a big treat when I get to review such a great specimen like this. Today we're examining Studio Series 86 Perceptor, another fabulous figure lovingly provided by... Uh, my local target. Perceptor is supposed to be one of the Autobots' many egg-headed scientists, but you wouldn't guess that based on how he looks. Perceptor is yoked. He's built like a juiced late 80s wrestler, with thick limbs and a broad stocky body. Why does he have nicer curves than Legacy RC? He's even got a little pair of trunks on. And with his friend Blaster, they form Cybertron's finest tag team champions. Explosiveness that can never ever be recreated. A chemical combustion that forms a bond forever and ever. I'm incredibly impressed by the colors. Bright red, pastel blue, and a little bit of dark gray to break it up. Mostly everything is cast in the color it's supposed to be, aside from the multiple gray knobs and his chest. And I'm glad because whoever painted mine really slopped it on thick and left a huge glob of paint on his right titty and some splatter on his arm. But honestly, I could just gush about Perceptor forever because he does all these little things that I love. The details are well rendered and not overwhelming. Even behind his chest, you'll find some gorgeous panel lining and a crisp silver lined Autobot badge. There's treads molded into his legs for the sake of the tank mode and the design continues onto the back of his knees. Yeah, did I mention he has molded details on his joints? The head is spectacular. It's simple, but the face especially is well-defined, with the silver paint accentuating the lines of his cheeks and lips. I think Overlord might just have some stiff competition this year. Maybe they should have a little kiss-off to settle this. I just noticed that mine has one eye mispainted, and that makes me very gumpy. But it's the same eye that IDW Perceptor replaces, so I guess it's lore accurate. Or maybe it's a sign that I shouldn't cancel my extra pre-order at Big Bad Toy Store. December? Are you serious? I have him in my hand right now. Big Bad Toy Store, please sponsor the show. I swear I won't complain about how slow you guys get product anymore. And I'm totally in love with the way they designed his feet. Instead of breaking the flow of his legs by cutting the ankle rocker straight through them, the feet actually pivot from underneath, so the shape of the leg is maintained while including the proper posability. But articulation in general is not one of his biggest strengths. It's fairly standard, and although I love how deep his knees can bend without being double jointed, he is missing wrists. And I know some may take issue with the ball jointed shoulders. But I don't mind them really, as they give him a little extra forward movement that he might not have if they were pinned universal joints. One little annoyance I have with Perceptor's robot mode is these joints that cut right through the middle of his thighs. They are exclusively used for his transformations, so you have to make sure they stay straight when you're posing him since they don't lock into place. But if I had a nickel for every Studio Series 86 figure that could look like he had been absolutely mangled in a horrific spaceship crash? I'd have three nickels, which is quickly escaping coincidence territory and entering line gimmick territory. Another thing that bugs me a little bit is the scope. Obviously it has to sit on his shoulder because it's part of the design, but there's no real option to remove it if you just want a cleaner look or more posing range for his head. It can just loosely hang off his back and this is probably the best you can do without making it entirely removable. Heaven forbid a transformer have removable parts. Hey. Nobody told me they were re-releasing Studio Series Lockdown. Perceptor's only accessory is a small red pistol with a little magazine sticking out. There do not seem to be any good storage options for it, nor do I know where I put the instructions so I can check. But it's bilaterally asymmetrical. On one side it has three vents, and on the other side it has this little switch. Set phasers from cute to funny. The transformation to microscope mode is simple, with most of the movement happening in the upper body. And well, He's a completely static microscope. These knobs don't turn at all, so he just sits there, perceiving, I guess. But you can actually observe what he's perceiving as you can kind of see through the lenses in the scope. Okay, we're gonna take a peek through the lenses. I'm gonna see what he's looking at. All right, here we go. Oh my God! 
Taking him into tank mode is similarly not too difficult, as all you have to do from microscope mode is rotate his legs around the other way and connect him to these tabs on the sides, making this mode slightly more sturdy. But it's also slightly more nonsensical. Creative, yes, but this obviously isn't based on any real tanks, nor does Perceptor have this alt mode in the show and especially not in the movie, which means that its inclusion is a pure callback to the original toy, blurring the line between this being an exclusively studio series design or a cheeky Generations figure infiltrator. As most fans probably know by now, the original Transformers 1984 line was an amalgamation of several different Japanese transforming toy lines, including Diaclone, Makuros, and Microman, specifically the Micro Change subline, which featured miniature vehicles or household objects that turn into robots. Okay, mom, I'm headed to school. I got my Walkman, I got my f peace. Perceptor's examination tray would function as a seat for a microman, if he had one, and the scope is now the barrel of the tank, which can softly click up and down. You know, I was just looking through there, you mean to tell me that thing was loaded? Tread details are on display here of course, but he doesn't have any wheels, so he cannot roll unfortunately. But you do get a good look at one of my most favorite details of all. They painted the backs of his hands so they can blend in with the rest of the arm. This is like super genius level stuff, so you know the Japanese side of the team came up with that. Do you see any back door? Do you see any door which you can escape? Perceptor is the best kind of good. He's simple, there aren't too many bells and whistles, but everything he does is graceful and direct. He has a couple of small issues that annoy me, but generally the look of this figure is so strong that I almost recommend him on that alone. And just like Blaster, he's a character that doesn't come around much, so based on that, I definitely don't think you should skip him. Check out the Studio Series playlist if you want to see more G1 movie characters. But as always, that's just my opinions. Please leave yours in the comments below. Bye bye.